Will the meeting please come to order? Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be provided by Councilman Fabian Bedney. So uh, this, this evening starts, as the evening starts, sorry, we see the end of Passover celebration. It's a festival of liberation, a day of sacred assembly, recalling the exodus from Egypt, where enslaved Jews had harsh lives of servitude and humiliation. During the celebration, we ponder why is this night different from all other nights. And we say in Hebrew, Manishtana Laila ze Michola Lelot. We were slaves to fire in Egypt, and God brought us out. And if God had not brought us, our ancestors out of Egypt, we and our children and our children's children will still be subjugated to Pharaoh in Egypt. During eight nights that end today, uh, we eat matzeh, a bread from affliction that reminds us of the hunger many fell every day of the year. The idea of freedom is just like it is at the heart of who we are as a nation, at the very foundation of Judaism as a people. Freedom for Americans in recent history or Jews thousands of years ago happened because we work hard at it. Bless are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sustains the entire world with goodness, grace, loving kindness, and compassion. He gives bread to all, for his grace is everlasting. And in his great goodness, we have never lacked anything, and we will never be deprived of food for the sake of his great name. For he is God who provides for all, and does good for all, and prepares food for all his creatures that he created. Blessed are you, Lord, who provides for all. God of our ancestors, may you remember us on this day of Passover to bless us with kindness and mercy for a life of peace and happiness. We pray that he who establishes peace in the heavens grant peace for all, for Israel, for all mankind, and let us say, Amen. O say shalom bimrumah, uya say shalom aleinu ve'alkol Israel, bimru, Amen. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of meeting of April 4th, 2017? Without objection, those minutes will stand uh, approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to elections and confirmations. Councilman Schulman, is there a report from the Rules and Confirmations Committee? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I know you look forward to this every meeting. There is a report from the Rules Committee, uh, but uh, before I do that, uh, just a note of personal privilege, we have some law students here from Belmont University. Uh, they are second and third year uh, law students. They are studying uh, government relations and advocacy, and they have come to learn from the Metro Council. They are in the back, and if it's okay, I'd ask them to stand and be recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, members of the council, uh, we had several appointments and reappointments come before the Rules Committee. Uh, the first is the Civil Service Commission, uh, reappointment of Ms. Billy Sanders for a term expiring March 31st, 2022. Uh, council reviewed Ms. Sanders. Uh, she's been on the uh, Civil Service Commission for a while. Uh, great choice. Uh, approved 5 4 zero against. Move for approval. You've heard, heard the motion for a confirmation of uh, Ms. Billy Sanders to the Civil Service Commission is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Convention Center Authority, um, we have two things on this one. This is an appointment of Ms. Lee Walton for a term expiring September 30th, 2020. Uh, Ms. Walton's gonna fill the unexpired term of Mr. Luke Simons. We also have to have a resolution and so we can do that after, if that's okay with uh, Mr. Jamison, we'll do that on the resolution part. Uh, they, they have to travel together. Uh, Convention Center Authority, again, appointment of Ms. Lee Walton. I will tell you that um, 
I did remember that Ms. Walton uh, taught me legal writing when I was in law school, and uh, so she has taken full credit of my rise to tremendous power as the rules chairman. Uh, we approve that one 540 against and move for approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Lee Walton to the Convention Center Authority. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Shulman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Emergency Communications District Board, uh, the reappoint Mr. David Gleason. Uh, we are going to need to defer at least one meeting. Uh, Mr. Gleason is under the weather. Um, so I'd move on to Nashville Education, Community, and Arts uh, TV, NECAT. Uh, the appointment of Ms. Karen Gabriel for a term expiring February 5th, 2018. She's filling the unexpired term of Mr. Roderick Spann. Uh, we reviewed um, uh, Ms. Gabriel's resume and talked to her. Approved that one 5 4 0 against, and I would move for approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Karen Gabriel to the Nashville Education Community and Arts TV Commission. Uh, it's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Board of Plumbing Examiners and Appeals. Uh, the appointment of Ms. Valerie Franklin for a term expiring March 10th, 2021. Had a good discussion with Ms. Franklin. Uh, we approved that one 740 against, and I would move for approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Valerie Frank Franklin to the uh, Board of Plumbing Examiners and Appeals Board. So it's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The uh, last one, Public Library Board. Uh, reappointment of Ms. Joyce Searcy for a term expiring April, April 6, 2024. Uh, we reviewed Ms. Searcy's resume. She has won more honors and awards than I think everybody in this room put together. So we are double checking to make sure all that is correct. But while we're doing that, we went ahead and approved that one six seven four zero against, and I would move for approval. Thank you. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Joyce Searcy to the Public Library Board. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Councilman Shulman. We would like to recognize those citizens who were confirmed tonight. So if you will please stand as I call your name and remain standing until everyone's name has been, entered, uh, been called. Um, to the Civil Service Commission, uh, Ms. Billy Sanders. To the Convention Center Authority, Ms. Lee Walton. To the um, Nashville Education, Community, and Arts TV Commission, or board, I'm not sure which, uh, Ms. Karen Gabriel. To the Plumbing Examiners and Appeals Board, Ms. Valerie Franklin. And to the Public Library Board, Ms. Joyce Searcy. On behalf of all the citizens of Nashville and the Metro Council, we'd like to thank you for your service and your commitment to the city. Um, please join me in giving them a hand of applause. We do have one presentation tonight, Council Lady Van Reese. Thank you, and joined by uh, Council Member Kendall as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we are here to uh, read a resolution recognizing the folks with Family and Children's Services, and we have some of them here with us today. If you want to come. Stand behind us, it'd be great while we read this. This is a little long, but it's because they do so much, so. <laughs> this is a resolution recognizing family and children's service. Whereas in 2017, Family and Children's Service celebrates its 75th year of service as one of Nashville's oldest and most respected nonprofits, and whereas Family and Children's Service serves all Tennesseans in crisis and transition by meeting them where they are and stand, understanding their needs and connecting them to the resources they need. 
And whereas family and children's service often fills the gaps in social services, creating a safety net to ensure that all children and families can be safe and healthy. And whereas family and children's service offers a variety of programs and services such as counseling, community-based services, and access to health care. And from there, each program and or service addresses that individual's need. And whereas those services include counseling clinical therapists located at FCS and other community-based locations provide low and known cost based on income, individual and family counseling services to those who need them most. Therapists help clients with a full range of issues from marriage and family counseling to domestic violence and substance abuse. Family focused solutions helps families receiving TANF, temporary assistance for needy families, overcome barriers to self sufficiency, allowing them to end their dependence on welfare assistance. Participants address mental health, domestic violence, substance abuse, child behavioral and health, health issues. SOSL, survivors of suicide loss, support groups are often offered at no co cost to those who have lost a loved one from suicide. As many as one in four survivors of suicide will attempt suicide themselves. These groups offer the healing and shared experience in a safe environment. The crisis line provides free telephone counseling and support to anyone experiencing a crisis 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Crisis counselors assist callers struggling with thoughts of suicide, grief, depression, anxiety, domestic violence, divorce, parenting problems, addiction, or serious mentalness. Language translation services are also available. And the crisis line, for those of you who need to write it down, 615-244-7400. Any person, any problem, any time, 24 hours a day. Whereas to this day, Family and Children's Service has partnered up with many businesses in the community, remained true to its vision, and is one of the most stable, thriving nonprofit organizations in Nashville. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes Family and Children's Service for the significant impact that they have made and continue to make. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. The Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing family and children's service. The Metropolitan Council Office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented to family and children's service. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption by the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. This was adopted on the 21st of March in 2017. And on behalf of all of us, all 40 council members have signed these documents, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. We need to make sure Sharon Hurts in here, too. We need to make sure Sharon in here. Okay. We have five of these. We'd like to hear from the executive director, Michael Smirsey. Hi, um, thank you so much, Councilwoman. Um, it's an honor to serve this agency. I've been here for six years now this month. Um, I'm a, moved to Nashville as a, as a young child, and it's the very spirit of the council and people stepping up to serve folks that really was what created Family and Children's Service 75 years ago when a woman named Mary Jane Worthen had the idea that the least of us needed to be cared for by those who had the most. And that's kind of been the spirit that has kept Family and Children's Service alive throughout the years, has allowed us to step up when there were needs. Um, we were one of the agencies that stepped up during the flood and actually the call center, our call center was the hub during, during the flood and we were proud to be able to do that. We appreciate this recognition and we look forward to moving on to our next 75 years. So thank you so much. Thank you, Council Lady Van Rees. Without objection tonight, we're going to go out of order and take BL 2017 656 first. Um, BL 2017, is there objection? 
Seeing none, BL 2017-656, Gilmore, O'Connell, and uh, Karen Johnson. Names the bridge over I-40, I-65 between 11th Avenue North and 12th Avenue North along the 1100 block of Jefferson Street in honor of Bishop Joseph W. Walker III. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I would like to also thank my council colleagues for not objecting. I would like to move this bill with uh, brief, um, exp um, brief comments. Is there a second? Thank Lord you so yours. much. I am so proud to co-sponsor this bill naming the Jefferson Street overpass after Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III, who has been a unifier and bridge builder in this city like no other. He first became the pastor some 25 years ago when he was only 24 years old, and there were only 175 members, and now it's grown to over 33,000. That is some real commitment. I just think about working with 40 council members and what it's like. I can only imagine 33,000. Bishop Walker has never co-signed co himself to merely growing his congregation and ministering to their needs. He has reached out to find common ground among people across denomination, race, age, and income. I think particularly of Nashville Unites. His successful effort to bring minority communities together with leaders of Nashville's criminal justice system to honestly address the problems and find solutions in the wake of national unrest in Ferguson, Missouri. I also think with the multiple city partners to establish the new level CDC, which last night we heard give a report about affordable housing, which Mount Zion works with as well. I also think about the uh, thousands of backpacks that they give away to school children each year, which the city used to do at one time, but we no longer do. Bishop Walker has changed our city for the better in countless ways, and it has all began on Jefferson Street. As he celebrates this 25th anniversary of thinking big and giving bigger, and with every indication of continuing to do so for many years to come, join me in thanking him by conferring upon him this well-deserved honor of designating this bridge the Bishop Joseph W. Walker III overpass. And with that, I move for approval. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd also like to join in wholeheartedly supporting the naming of the Jefferson Street overpass after Bishop Walker and want to emphasize the extraordinary work Bishop Walker has done in the education field, particularly among minority communities during his 25 years of service to Nashville. Councilwoman Gilmore mentioned the backpack giveaways. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I'd like to recognize and congratulate Bishop Walker on his confirmation just last week as chairman of the Tennessee State University Board of Trustees. This honor and responsibility is in recognition of his enormous contributions to supporting students in their quest for higher education opportunities that will maximize their talents. Furthermore, he and his wife, Dr. Stephanie Walker, a neotechnologist at Vanderbilt have established a scholarship fund that has awarded hundreds and thousands of dollars in college scholarships to many deserving students throughout Middle Tennessee. In addition to the couple's personal contributions, Bishop Walker has committed Mount Zion's support to many colleges and universities with $10,000 in scholarships each. Bishop Walker, who received his undergraduate degree from Southern University, a Master's of Divinity from Vanderbilt University, and a Doctorate of Ministry from Princeton Theological Seminary, knows the value of a strong faith community in collegiate success. That's why each year, Mount Zion holds the largest college worship service in the country at Tennessee State University to encourage students to not only stay motivated and on track, but to take courageous stands against injustice and become change agents in their communities. He also provides transportation and fellowship every Sunday for students at all Nashville area colleges who want to worship at Mount Zion. Bishop Walker's ministry to young people is another sterling example of his capacity to not only change our community for the better, but change the future for the better. He is so deserving of this honor, and I urge you to confer it tonight. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. 
I would like to just stand in and move of the support of Bishop Walker. Me being a man of the cloth myself, just would like to stand in support of this. And I asked all of my colleagues, I don't have all the elegant words and figures of the, the everything that they have done, but I have seen uh, the changes that has happened within the North Nashville community. And uh, befitting, it is very fitting uh, for us to, after we name a bridge after uh, Mr. Sigenthaler, to also do the same for the bishop of this, this great church uh, that is now the, pre the presiding bishop of, of a, a religious organization, Full Gospel. So I, I just stand in, in that move, and I ask all of you, my friends and my constituents, to follow behind uh, Mrs. Gilmore and support this, uh, this, this move to uh, name this after a great man. Thank you. That's been all right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, uh, uh, a question and then I guess a comment. I'd heard from someone earlier today, uh, Mr. Jameson, uh, this question is directed towards you. Is uh, this, the bridge that we're naming, is it a metro structure or someone had told me that it could possibly be a state uh, bridge? At approximately one o'clock this afternoon, the Metro Council office was made aware of an email from TDOT, uh, specifically a gentleman named Brian Carroll who uh, maintained or opined in uh, his words, quote, the I-40 bridge at Jefferson Street belongs to the state. So chapter 1326, under which we would rename structures, allows us to rename structures of the metropolitan government. The council office immediately placed calls to the Public Works Department and the Planning Department. The short answer is, in the short time since we were first notified of that dispute, neither of those departments will have time to absolutely certify who owns exactly what. The Public Works Department in a very limited amount of time went back to the 1977 Public Works Road Plan, the 1981 MDHA Jefferson Street Revitalization Plans, 1966 Interstate Plans, and could not find a variety of documents including easements and ordinances to clarify do we own the structure and the state owns the land or vice versa. And therefore there is some confusion as to who owns what at this point. I would offer points on both sides, depending on how you want to vote, to consider these two aspects. The practical effect of this is an honorarium. It will not change an official address on, this, on the bridge. There are no structures, no businesses, no entities that have an address on the bridge. Metro maintains it. It's on their maintenance list, and they consider it their ownership responsibility. And this body has owned and named bridges on state routes before. We named a bridge on Highway 96 in the previous council. But on the other hand, public works and planning are unable to tell you with any specificity who owns what particular portion of the structure as we sit here today. A deferral may be uh, the best thing to do to allow us to make that with certainty, but the celebrants are eager to honor, I believe, an anniversary on April 23rd, which doesn't allow us that deferral. And that is the entirety of what I've learned since one o'clock. Thank you. I, I, someone had mentioned it to me before the council meeting, so I didn't know that's where it did come from. So um, I appreciate that. And and I rise, um, I guess, partly as uh, chairman of the Public Works Committee, uh, also partly due to my, uh, as I expressed at the last council meeting, of uh, naming structures after those that are with us. Um, I know that is perhaps a uh, morbid distinction. Um, but it is something that I have a concern about, now, not particularly uh, aimed at any one person that we are honoring, um, but they have not completed their career. I know uh, no matter the age, but if you are, uh, no matter what you're doing, you're still working, you're still doing, um, and that we have to be careful as a metro government of how we honor folks um, because that, that can have a long-lasting impact. And, um, and... And I will, uh, I guess it is uh, my fault that I'd, I've heard, of course, of uh, Bishop Walker and a lot of the good things that he has done. And I think Nashville is much better for him and everything that he's done, not just simply in his, uh, in his large congregation, but um, in reading the, uh, the attachment that came with the uh, ordinance and some of the things I've learned through the media and uh, some of the emails that we've gotten, I was not aware of, some, of a lot, many, honestly, of the programs that he had done um, for uh, uh, people of Nashville, for children of Nashville, um, for school children, and, and everything that he has done and, uh, and that his church has done. Um, 
so I, I'm not going to stand in the way of this, and I certainly don't want to um, do anything that uh, uh, stops from honoring him in their celebration um, that is upcoming. Um, and I guess I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Scott Davis. No, I I think yours is on. Let's see. Testing is this on? It, it's on. I rise in support of Bishop Walker. And I want to remind people in this chamber, you know, you may have your reasons feeling one way or another. That's okay. Because just like in the spirit of our Lord and Savior and Bishop Walker, I forgive you and I love you. But one thing I have to let you know right now is I stand here and tell you I will honor your pastor, your rabbi, your spiritual leader. We have many great spiritual leaders in this community, in this city of Nashville, that need to be honored. Let us honor this great man. You know, my daughter takes part with her friend um, Trinity in their Rites of Passage program for young girls, a great program. And I know there's been a lot of allegations, you know, but once again, don't we live in America? Aren't you innocent until you're proven guilty? That's what we say. That's what's written all over our buildings. But I want to let you know, I find certain allegations atrocious, and I'm man enough to address them directly. But what I trust, and you know I love my daughter. She, she means the world to me. What I trust her going to Mount Zion and attending certain programs, if, I, if, if certain allegations were true, and they're not. And that's the elephant in the room. Please honor this great man and this great church and this great legacy. So let's move this bill forward. Thank you. Councilman Pauley. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to call for the question. Previous question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're, we're going to vote. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? That, that's not the way it works, sir. If somebody, are you abstaining? That takes us to a machine vote. It, just to clarify you guys on the rules, if under the new rule that y'all adopted, any abstention or negative vote on second or third reading, we'll get to you, Councilman Davis. Any, any vote on second or third reading where there's an abstention or a negative vote, we go to a machine automatic. Councilman Scott Davis, you may have to vote verbally, but we will get your, we'll get you here. Councilman Davis, are you an affirmative vote? Okay, Madam Clark, if you will close the machine and tally the vote. I have technically 31 for, none against, eight abstentions. Motion carries. That brings us to the consent agenda. The following uh, items are currently on the consent agenda. RS 2017 633. 644, 645, 648, 649, and 650, and 652 through 662. For those of you here in the in the audience uh, on that previous vote, uh, I sh maybe you, it wasn't clear. It was it passed. So, no. no. I. I I shouldn't have said that because our rules don't allow for applause, and I'm now supposed to reprimand you for applauding. So, Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to make sure that um, we passed over six. Uh, it's 650. 650 it's is currently on the consent agenda. Would six, you like? 651 is uh, not on the consent agenda. 
So, uh, okay, so 650 I need to pull because I'm going to have to recuse myself from that. Right, okay. Thank you. Any other items to pull from the consent agenda? All right, if you'll bear with me just for a minute. RS 2017 633, Elrod Cooper and Allen approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation <laughs> and the Department of Public Works for the construction of a state industrial access road servicing Centurion Stone. RS 2017 644, Kendall Cooper and Allen authorizes the Director of Public Property to purchase property at 606 19th Avenue North, 0 Joe Johnston Avenue, and 1818 Joe Johnston Avenue for the use and benefit of the Metro Nashville Public Schools. RS 2017-645, Cooper, Bednay, and Murphy authorizes a memorandum of, of, of understanding between Metro Government and the Metro Development and Housing Agency. RS 2017-648, Bednay, uh, Karen Johnson, and others approves the selection of the Neighborhoods Resource Center by the Department of Codes Administration to operate the Codes Offender School. RS 2017-649, Councilman Cooper, approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency uh, to the Department of Finance to provide public assistance pursuant to the Presidential Disaster Declaration to complete repairs and or replacements to facilities damaged during the April and May 2010, um, during April and May 2010. RS 2017-652, Pardue and Murphy author approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Emergency Communications Center to allow Metro government access to TDOT's live video feeds of traffic conditions. RS 2017-653, Gilmore, Cooper, and Murphy approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development uh, and the Nashville Career Advancement Center to provide reemployment services and eligibility assessment services to help unemployment insurance claimants. RS 2016 654, Cooper and Murphy approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to use rapid response funds to pay for sub recipients' administrative costs. RS 2016 655, Cooper and Murphy approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to use funds to pay administrative costs. RS 2017-656, Van Riesk, O'Connell, and others approves four amendments to four agreements between the Metro Government and the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation concerning maintenance of closed solid waste disposal facilities. RS 2017-657, Cooper and Elrod amends RS 2015-10, which approved an application for the 2016 Severe Repetitive Loss Buyout Project grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to Metro Government to add maximum prices to be paid for each parcel consistent with BL 2010-765. RS 2017-658, Councilman Elrod, cl cl classifies public roads in Davidson County, Tennessee. RS 2017-658, one moment. We may come back and delete 658. RS 2017-659, uh, Councilman, Council Lady Murphy and Shulman confirms the appointment of Lee Walton to the Board of Directors of the Convention Center Authority for the remainder of the unexpired term of William Lucas Simmons following his resignation. RS 2017-660, Council Lady Van Rees recognizes Tracy McCartney, Executive Director of the Tennessee Fair Housing Council. RS 2017-661, Council Lady Murphy recognizes May 2017 as American Stroke Month. RS 2017-662, uh, Councilman Kendall recognizes May 1 through May 5, 2017 as Show Your Love for Teachers Kickoff Week in Metro Nashville. That brings us to committee reports. Councilman Bednay, ad hoc affordable housing. RS 2017-645. I don't really have the report on me, but I can tell you that it passed. I didn't get a copy of it. All right. It's, uh, it's to nothing. 
Madam Clerk, six to nothing. It was uh, approved six to nothing in committee. A budget and finance, Councilman Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, met yesterday and uh, passed 14 4 0 against for the following resolutions on the consent agenda 633, 644, um, 645, 648, 649, 653, 654, 655, 656, and 657. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilman Coleman, Colds Fair Farmers Market. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Codes Committee met and decided on 648, 4 4, none against, and recommend approval. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Kendall, Education. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, education Committee met today uh, on Resolution 644 and voted 7 4 0 against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Pulley, Health Hospitals. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee uh, heard two resolutions, and I believe they've both been pulled from the consent agenda, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lady, sorry, yeah, what it was. Uh, Council Lady Murphy, uh, Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing. Uh, the Personnel Committee voted 6 4 0 against on Resolution RS 2017 645. Resolution 2017 652, RS 2017 653, RS 2017 654, RS 2017 655. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Ann Allen, Planning Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning Zoning Historical recommended approval 13 in favor, zero against for RS 2017 633 and RS 2017 644. Thank you, Council Councilman Pardue, Public Safety. 652, Public Safety voted 4 0 to defer indefinitely. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Elrod, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Works uh, Committee uh, recommend for approval resolution 633, 656, uh, and 657. Uh, 10 in favor, zero against, and I would ask to bump 658 for a typographical uh, uh, amendment or substitute resolution. Okay, so we're pulling 658 from the consent agenda. Is that correct? Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, we had a rules committee had 2017 659 approved that one 5 0, 2017 660 approved that one 4 0, and then we had 661 and 662 and approved both those 7 4 0 against. I think we've got everything settled on the consent agenda. We're good. Can, I'm sorry, I skip, skipped over Councilman Potts, so let me go back and get Councilman Potts. I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic Parker voted to approve six, resolution 652540 against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Truman. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I believe all committee reports are now in. Uh, I would move for approval on all resolutions on the consent agenda. There's a motion to approve the consent agenda. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us back to RS 2017 615. Councilman Glover requests all officers, department directors, and other heads of all boards, commissions, authorities, and other agencies of Metro government submitting requests for funds to the ins uh, for the ensuing fiscal year for capital improvements to the director of finance to submit copies to the Metro Council at the same time of such submissions. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Our budget and finance voted 10-4-0 against to defer um, this resolution for two meetings at the request of the sponsor. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And with that, I will move for a two meeting deferral. It's a motion to defer two meetings. It's properly seconded. Anything further? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-616, Councilman Glover, adopts a policy requiring a limitation on the amount of debt service funds appropriated for the uh, amortization of general and urban service bonds in the annual operating budget of Metro government. Councilman Glover. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted 14-4-0 against to defer the, me uh, the to defer the resolution two meetings at the request of the sponsor. Councilman Glover. Vice Mayor. And with that, I will move a, for a two meeting deferral with a brief, a brief explanation. Of course, you know, we're moving into uh, the budget season right now. We're going to start hearing from all of the departments and we're going to start talking in detail about what this budget can mean and what perhaps debt is going to look like as we go forward. And so I think it's a proper time to have this conversation and talk about what this resolution can actually mean. And I, with some of the discussion we had yesterday, I think it stimulated us to really start looking at the overall debt, the overall impact of, of what debt may happen to do for this city. So I think the timing is right uh, to do this right in the middle of when we have all our hearings and at a time that we can have a detailed conversation about that. And so that's why I've asked to move it. And once again, we will re uh, renew the deferral for two meetings. Thank motion you, Vice Mayor. Sure. There's a motion to defer two meetings. Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-640, Councilman Leonardo provides amendments to the charter of the Metropolitan Government and sets forth a brief, brief description of each amendment to be placed on the ballot. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Mendez. On this resolution, the Charter Revision Committee voted three to zero uh, and to defer indefinitely. This time I'd make a motion to defer indefinitely. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-646, Councilman Bednick, Kendall, and others, declares surplus and authorizes the grant of real property to certain nonprofit organizations not exceeding $1,775,904.30 from the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to certain nonprofit organizations selected for the ex express purpose of constructing and rehabilitating affordable or workforce housing. Councilman Bednick. Do we have committee reports? Council, uh, Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget and Finance voted to approve 14-4-0 against. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, Zoning, Historical recommended approval, 12 in favor, one against. Councilman Bednay. Uh The Affordable Housing Committee recommended approval. 6-0, yes, sir. And I move to approve. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-647, Cooper, Bedney, and Allen, declares surplus and conveys a parcel of property to New Level Community Development uh, uh, Corporation and approves an amended and restated grant contract between L NLCDC and Metro Government for the construction of affordable housing units. Uh, Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance met and voted 13-4 to approve, uh, zero against with one abstention. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, well, we didn't get our, did we get our, we did not get our committee reports. Councilman Bednay. Yeah, the Affordable Housing Committee recommended approval. Okay, uh, Council A. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Councilman Mendez. I abstained on this one because uh, yesterday at the affordable at both committees uh, where I talked about this because I'm on the board of new level and I'd like to be marked as abstaining Thank now yeah. also. I thought that was the case, but I'd probably I'll put it on the record. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we have gotten our committee reports. Councilman Cooper, you moved to approve. Uh, yes, I moved to approve. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 650, Council, uh, Council Lady Gilmore, Councilman Cooper, approves a grant to provide meals that meet RDA nutritional guidelines to eligible seniors in their homes and in congregate, congregate um, meal sites throughout Davidson County uh, from the Greater National Regional Council to the Metro Social Services Commission. Uh, Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget and Finance. I voted to approve 14-4-0 against, and I move for approval. Let's get our committee reports. Yep. Council, Council, Councilman Poley. Thank you, Mr. President. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services recommended for approval five in favor, zero against. Thank you. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just need to recuse myself on this one and the next one, if that's okay. 
All right. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we got our committee reports. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-651, Gilmore and Cooper approves a grant to provide transportation services to eligible seniors and handicapped residents in Nashville, I'm sorry, in Davidson County from the Greater Nashville Regional Council to the Metro Social Services Commission. Uh, Councilman Cooper uh, or Gilmore, I, I'm not sure, who, whichever. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah. Well, I was going to uh, give the committee report, um, which was voted 14 4 and 0 against. Councilman Poli. Health Hospitals and Social Services recommend for approval four in favor, zero against, with one abstention. Thank you, Councilman. The motion uh, move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 658, Councilman Elrod classifies public roads in Davidson County, Tennessee. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Works recommended for approval. Ten in favor, zero against. I would move the uh, substitute resolution. There's a motion to substitute. Is there a second? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? You're on your bill as substituted. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you. This is just fixing literally one letter in the resolution. Um, so I would, and it's just a uh, pro forma resolution that we have to adopt every year according to state law. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without objection, we'll take all those bills together. Seeing no objection, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Bills on first reading is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on second reading. Bill 2016-408, Councilman Roten. Changes 285.03 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for property located at 2040 Hickory Hill Lane to permit up to five to permit up to 500 single-family lots. Councilman Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval. I think we're all getting the same buzz. There must be a an alarm of some sort. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and, and historical recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Uh, That's the committee report. And Councilman Roten, could you renew your motion? I move approval. The motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Jameson, will you check that uh, alert and make sure that we're good in the room? I'm sorry? All right. BL 2016-484, Councilman Leonardo, Elrod, and Mina Johnson requires the local approval of landfills, solid waste disposal facilities, and solid waste processing facilities prior to the construction of such landfills. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilman Elrod. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Works uh, Committee took no action, so we are asking that uh, should it pass today on second reading that be re-referred to the Public Works Committee meeting uh, to the Public Works Committee for uh, before third reading. Mr. Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Four years. Um, this bill is uh, what's known as the Jackson Law, uh, and this is a bill that I'd introduced back in November of 2016, and We've done quite a bit of work on it uh, since that time. Um, I had deferred it initially the first time to try to work with some of the landfill owners to see if we had some middle ground here uh, that we could work out some sort of an agreement that would be beneficial that everyone could support. And at this time, uh, it doesn't seem that there's any sort of, of legal middle ground that, that would be enforceable necessarily for both parties. Um, we had a special meeting of the Public Works Committee on March the 28th, 2017 in this room. And we had a lot of folks uh, that turned out and everyone spoke uh, in support of the law. And as a matter of fact, we had um, Mr. Dan Lane, who I believe is present uh, here today, who was on the uh, Solid Waste Regional Board for well over 20 years. And he spoke very eloquently uh, about this particular bill and is in support of uh, the Jackson Law. And essentially what we're trying to do, this law is not just about uh, the Bordeaux community or District 1. Uh, this legislation is something that gives every district council person a little bit more control, a whole lot more control over what goes on 
as it pertains to new landfills or the expansion of landfills. Uh, I know as the process has gone forward, uh, the Public Works Committee has uh, demonstrated uh, that they would like to uh, receive some information as to whether or not we as a body, the Metropolitan Council, could come up with our own version of uh, the Jackson Law, take what we wanted and, and leave the rest. Uh, and he reached out through uh, Senator Dickerson to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General basically said that it's something that uh, our Metro lawyer should take up. So I asked for an opinion uh, from our attorney, uh, Mr. John Cooper, uh, the head of Metro Legal, and he was generous enough to write a legal opinion of which I had provided to everyone yesterday. Uh, and essentially, in its most basic sense, uh, there's nothing uh, that we can do to have local control uh, absent employing uh, this Jackson Law. And I know there's been a lot of confusion about necessarily what this does, but it's very simple. If there's a new landfill that's proposed in Davidson County at this time, uh, it would be a simple resolution that would come before the council and then at that point in time it would go before the board of zoning appeals and then on to the state uh, as uh, as we stand here today as it pertains to an expansion of either the landfill in my district or the one in councilman Roden's district it would simply go before the solid waste regional board and then on to the state and so the Jackson law what I'm asking uh, your vote on this evening would make it have to go through three readings in either process so it gives the council actually a voice, much more of a voice. And in addition to that, it contains a whole lot of robust notice provisions. Uh, it, it states that uh, mailers have to go out either on a new one or an expansion to everyone within a three mile radius. You have to have signs that are three feet by five feet that state what exactly uh, you're proposing to place in this landfill, where you can get more information, and where there would be uh, actual public hearing. So this is something that gives every council person and, their, and the people in their district more of a voice because their council person has the ability to weigh in on whether or not this is something that they would like to um, have in their district or not have in their district. Um, as we've gone forward here, I think that you know there's been a, a serious lobbying effort and there's been a, a lot of uh, discussion about this. And, and I think part of the reason too is that you know it could very well be you know the environmental injustice portion of this or the other side of it is that uh, anytime there's more regulations on a landfill, uh, it forces them to, to have to retool uh, what they're doing and become a little more green, to, to talk more about recycling, to talk more about composting. Because if it's harder to get a new landfill or an expansion of a landfill, then maybe they need to look at some alternatives to where they can still also make money. Because if that does not happen, then you're gonna see competition in the marketplace for recycling and the like. So I think this is a step definitely in the right direction. As most of you know, um, in about four and a half to five years, uh, the landfill in Murfreesboro is actually going to be full. And this is something that if this council does not take up, uh, if those of you who do get reelected are eligible to come back, I guarantee you in the next council session, this is something that we'll be having a community discussion on. But at the end of the day, uh, the only way we can have any sort of local control of this is through the Jackson Law. And right now, uh, the solid waste without the Jackson Law, if the Solid Waste Regional Board makes a decision, that decision is allowed uh, to be overturned by the Commissioner of TDEC. If we have the Jackson Law, what we say goes. The state has to acknowledge our will as a people. Uh, this is not the first time this has actually been proposed. Um, Representative uh, uh, Brenda Gilmore, who's present here uh, this evening, she actually uh, had introduced this a few years back. Uh, and as we've gone through the process, I would like to thank uh, Representative Gilmore, also Representative Love, Senator Harper, and Representative Mitchell, who have been on board and also support this legislation. Uh, and I'd like to also thank John Cooper, as well as my fellow council members who have uh, been here to support this. This is the second reading. We need 27 votes on third reading to opt into this. Uh, if the state were to change something and we didn't like it, then we can get back out of the Jackson Law with 27 votes. But if there's something within side of you that, that you're struggling with, something that you just don't seem to understand and you're not comfortable with, again, I would encourage you to support this on second reading so that we can keep this conversation going because this is an issue that's reoccurring and it's going to keep popping back up. And it's just not about District 1. It just so happens that I have a landfill that would like to expand and without this I can do nothing about it. But at the end of the day, if there's going to be a landfill proposed in any of your districts, this is the only way that we have local control by which um, the uh, state must show deference. And so at this, at this time, you know, I would, I've said it, I'll say it again, if there's any questions you have, I'm, I'm more than willing to answer questions. Um, I've only received, like you, one email uh, against it. The rest have been supporting. So I would ask for your support tonight on second reading. Thank you very much. Council Lady Allen. No, that's left over. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. Um, so uh, this is kind of a two-part question, and it came up in uh, Public Works. Um, 
the first one would be to Mr. Jamison. Um, we have existing laws on the books regarding um, expansion of landfills uh, and dealing with landfills right now. Correct. Correct? So we have, a stat we have what's called the status quo. Um, and then we have a, a measure in front of us that would enact the Jackson law. It's my understanding, just to make it clear to everybody, that we can't have one or the other. We have to, we have to choose. We either have what's on the books now or we can replace it with the Jackson law. We can't have kind of a combination of both of them. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the second question goes to Mr. Cooper, and this was the question I asked at, um, uh, at the Public Works Committee. Um, I want to make sure that we, uh, the, at least the council, has more control over these decisions. And if it means being more burdensome or whatever, um, that's what I want to know. So the question that I think I'd ask you in the meeting was, which one, at least in your opinion, gives us more control? I know that's a tough question, but which one makes it, uh, gives the council more control in terms of this process? From a procedural standpoint, the Jackson Law would give the council more of an opportunity to weigh in on the issue. It would, ha it would um, require approval on three separate readings. Um, it would, there would be a mandatory public hearing if someone requested it. Uh, you've got the more robust notice provisions and the council would also have the opportunity to make findings concerning the eight factors in the statute regarding the, um, the proposed landfill. So it's, it's really, from a procedural standpoint, from an effect, effectiveness standpoint, as long as the council clearly indicates its reason for the decision and if that reason is based on sound judgment, from a practical standpoint, it, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, so it's really more of a, a procedural mechanism. Okay, so l let me ask a quick question about the procedural. If we pass the Jackson Law, it's an ordinance, so there's three readings. Correct. Right? Under the status quo now, we have a resolution, it's one reading. Right. So the way I look at it is we have three chances to, if the people are concerned, we have three chances to block it, or three chances to defeat an ordinance as compared to one resolution. Correct. Right? Um, under the Jackson Law, there's a, a, there has to be a public hearing? There has to be a public hearing if someone requests it. You have to give notice that... Uh, there's a, of this proposed landfill, and if, if someone wants a public hearing, then you, uh, one must be held. Okay. Under, under the current, the status quo, requirement for a public hearing? There's no requirement for a public hearing. The council, by supermajority vote, could schedule a public hearing at the following council meeting, um, but that would take um, council action to do that, not just one person requesting it. And, and then one last thing that maybe needs some explanation that uh, the sponsor of the resolution or the sponsor of the ordinance said, and that is um, in terms of state, uh, the state taking an action above something that the, that the city does. What does that mean? Uh, as compared to the, as in terms of dealing with the status quo, if, if a board, I guess it's our solid waste board, took an action, can that be overturned by the commissioner of TDEC? Uh, TDEC can overturn the decision if the commissioner determines that the board acted in an arbitrary or a capricious manner. Um, so the, it's not just sole discretion to turn it over because the commissioner wants to. Um, uh, so there's a standard, but the commissioner does yes. have the ability to, to right. overturn that. That's correct. All right. And under the Jackson law, that's not... It would not get to the commissioner. Okay. Well, I know this is on second reading. I know we're going to have more discussion if it gets to third, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Vice Mayor. John, I have a couple of other questions, if you don't mind. If we were to pass this and the state decided that they were going to amend the Jackson Law, are we bound by those changes? Yes. Since... Since the Jackson Law is a delegation of state authority to the local government, if the state decides that it wants to take back that authority, then um, we would, the, the council, local government, would be bound by that decision. Okay. Does local government, i.e. the council, have the authority to craft 
a Nashville response to this and create our own legislation? No, you would either adopt the Jackson law or keep going with what we have. With what we've got. Okay. Um, Back in 2011, when Bellevue fought the C&D landfill and it had gone before solid waste, they approved it. It then went to the BZA and 300 of my constituents went with me and we successfully defeated it. Can you please compare and contrast in real time what would have happened back then in both scenarios? Back then, it would have gone to the council first for a determination as to whether that site was, uh, uh, the, the proposed plan for that landfill was appropriate for that site. And, and the council would go through the three reading process and probably a public hearing um, and then would have made a, the council would have made the decision of whether um, that should move forward. And if that property owner had decided to appeal that decision, what would have happened? Had the Jackson law been in place, uh, it would have gone to the, uh, been a direct appeal to Chancery Court. Um, the chancellor would have weighed the evidence and made the determination as to whether it was appropriate. So my only comment about this, and I'm still struggling with what I'm going to do, but I appreciate the intent, the nature, having fought it myself five years ago, six years ago. That said, my greatest concern is that one person can overturn it if we pass the Jackson Law, as I understand it, being the chancellor, right? Uh, Well, the the chancellor could... If they appeal, if it. if the council if the council denied a landfill or a landfill expansion, right. that could be appealed to Chancery. The chancellor could overturn the council. At that point, the government Metro would have the ability to appeal that decision to the Court of Appeals. So, in in any event, there's a another, there's another automatic hierarchy. right of appeal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I was the one in the Public Works Committee meeting that asked for uh, uh, for this to go forward and for it to come back to the Public Works Committee um, for third reading. And I did it because I think um, I've been trying to work diligently, and I want to say I appreciate Councilman Leonardo's patience um, on this and uh, and his, I guess, give a shout out to him that he's been fighting very, uh, very hard for his community to uh, prevent uh, the landfill from expanding. And I think what I know I've struggled with, I think other council members, and I think it was evident in the committee meeting, is we're trying to find the perfect solution to this. Is it because we're, we're stuck with a binary choice? Do we keep it the way it is, or do we a- adopt the Jackson law? And I will, and in the weeks that I think we've been working about this, I've been uh, trying to find an answer to that, or perhaps a third way, is that we're not going to find a perfect answer. I mean, I quickly made a list of cons for each one. Uh, we keep the status quo, for instance. Um, this council doesn't have any say over expansions of landfills, which I know is what is most important, I believe, from what it, from his statements is most important to Councilman Leonardo and Councilman Roten. Also, um, um, there's not an automatic public hearing on uh, uh, landfills under the status quo. Under the Jackson statute, as uh, Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Wiener stated, we're basically tied to how the legislature writes that statute. And I think uh, uh, we've seen um, how uh, legislature, uh, well, I think we all know what that means. Um, so I, I have that concern as well. Also, the standard of proof. There's a higher standard of proof under our current um, uh, uh, way of handling these under our current uh, under our current. Um, structure. While under the Jackson law, the chancellor and the uh, appeals court would have a de novo, brand new review. So I would, um, I guess, from looking at this, and we had a special committee meeting on this uh, a couple of weeks ago to try to get as much experts or folks that are versed in this to come forward as possible. Uh, to be honest with you, there's, and I think as uh, Mr. Jameson has said, there's not a lot of case law on this. There's not a lot of law that we can turn to. We really just have to read the statute as it is and kind of take it from there. There's not going to be a perfect solution to this or an answer of A or B, but we have to choose between A or B.
So for tonight, I ask for it to go back to the Public Works Committee meeting, for, and I will be voting um, to approve it on second reading. I would urge you to do it as well. We ha do have a 27-vote uh, threshold to reach on third reading, so, which is a high threshold. Public Works Committee meeting is still going to work and, and discuss this. And it's more, as I think Councilman Leonardo said in the committee, we have a lot of the facts and a lot of um, the different ways of statutes or the, you know, the A or the B. We just need to understand it more, I think, is where we're at. Um, so I would urge you to vote for... Uh, uh, approval tonight on second reading. Um, if uh, for some reason down the, down the road um, we, we want to uh, unadopt Jackson Law, the statute allows us to do that also with the 27 vote uh, threshold. So we do have that out provision. But I would urge you to vote for it on second reading tonight. And, and we still have third reading with a 27 vote threshold. Public Works Committee meeting is still going to be discussing this. And uh, we'll, and any more information that we get. I know uh, Senator Dickerson, I want to uh, appreciate him and his office um, asking for the Attorney General for opinion for some very pointed questions that Mr. Jameson wrote. And the Attorney General basically said we can't interpret your city statute for you. Um, I, I would disagree with how that was basically phrased and what the purpose of the questions were, but nonetheless, we're basically on our own on this. So I would ask for your, uh, uh, to approve it on second reading. Thank you. Councilman, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I ask a question, Mr. Jamison, for voting on this on second reading today, if it were enacted, does it become pending legislation? I would submit no. Um, you don't have a committee recommendation Yet, it's also not technically a zoning mechanism, so um, the answer, my answer would be no. Councilman Rosenberg. There you go. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm really struggling with this. I don't know if you can hear my head banging against my desk back here, um, but I'm struggling because I know that the most likely scenario for a future landfill is either in Councilman Leonardo's district or my district. They're the two largest districts in the county and the ones with the most available land. Um, I've been listening to the conversations for months since Councilman Leonardo introduced it, and I don't feel like I'm any closer to really understanding the implications than I was before. Um, I really just would hope that um, in public works on third reading, if it gets there, we have the opportunity to have a long discussion and get the opposing views and just get, I just want to know what our power is on a new landfill what our power is on an expanded landfill, what happens on appeal with a new landfill, what happens on appeal with an expanded law, uh, landfill, and understand it under current law and Jackson law. And I, I'm just hoping for clarity, and, and it hasn't happened so far. So I'm going to go back to just beating my head on the desk back here and look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Council Lady Meenan Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I understand a lot of people, our colleagues are confused. But one thing clear is we all want to do good for the community. Because uh, selecting a future landfill is a, a big decision. So we, if we have to select or have to deny, we have to have good reason. And we have to uh, get lots of community input. So the question is, under the current mechanism will give us and community great uh, voice, or moving into Jackson Law will give us and community more greater voice. And as of right now, many people are confused and not sure. And because you are confused and not sure is not a good reason to deny it. If you are not sure and want to make it right, let's move past this bill for second reading. And the next two weeks, let's uh, dig down about this Jackson Law and existing system, and then let's familiarize ourselves more so we can, either way you vote, will be comfortable. Under the current uh, uh, mechanism, we do have only one reading. Uh, applicant will go to BZA, and then BZA will notify a council member within uh, three business days. And then uh, within six day, 60 days, we as a council can decide if that location is good or not. 
and that's it. That's the process. But under the Jackson law, we will have opportunity to weigh in not only location, uh, but uh, environment, uh, health, safety. And so I will you know, spare those uh, details uh, when we have opportunity to uh, discuss in detail. So I ask you to just give us two more weeks. Let's pass this second reading and then really familiarize ourselves and then come back to public uh, our committee one more time and then really uh, discuss and vote on a uh, third reading. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Very confusing. The state says that make our own rules. When we make our own rules, state shuts us down. It's confusing. I get it. We, can we rezone it? Can we change this? Can we give more notice? If we can, then we can't. I think earlier it was said that we can call a public hearing. Is that correct, Mr. Jameson? You know, we could do a treat it like almost like a beer resolution. You know, if 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 we hear there's a landfill going in someone's district, we can call a public hearing. Is that correct? We can by a separate action, correct? We can. Okay. Now that that's clear, I stand in support of the councilman, gentleman from District One. When it comes to defending your home turf, you will do anything for your people. And I admire that. If he feels that this Jackson law is the best thing for his community, we need to stand and wrap our arms around him. Now, this is only second reading. You know, we are constantly looking for a compromise. Because I know a lot of you are in difficult situations here. And I know that we will work to find a compromise, but right now he needs you. Because as someone that has dealt with a waste transfer station, which Chancellery Court did vote to support the council's decision, it was turned over in the Court of Appeals. You know, and just so that we're clear that it was correct, since 2004 there has not been a Chancellery Court decision that's been overturned regarding landfills or transfer stations. And I may not be as eloquent as some of the attorneys, but that's true, because it happened in my district. And with half of my colleagues here, you fought with me, and we got rid of it. I just want to thank you for your help four years ago. So I feel your pain, sir. So what we need to do is really look at this some more, find a compromise, because there's one out there. He needs to feel secure that we're not going to put a dump in his district coming up in the next 5, 8, 10, 20 years. You know, there's ways to do it. And he's got to do whatever he can to protect his neighbors. And if he has to, if I mean, if, if it's Jackson Law, if he believes that strongly in it, you know, a lot of us are confused. But we all have one thing in common. The African-American community and other poor communities, you know, poor white people get dumped on just as much as African-American communities. And we should not be doing that. And right now, we have to really look at this. We put highways through people's neighborhoods. We put concrete plants, waste transfer stations. But now we're more in tune with what's going on. So let's, let's take our time. Let's get it through second reading. And let's come back to the table. There's some middle ground here. You know, I'm surprised the lawyers haven't figured out anything yet. But there's a way to do this. All his community needs to be is ensured that we're not going to continue the constant dumping on poor Caucasian communities and black communities. We just have to stop that. And I believe this council does not want to do that. Thank you for listening, and please support our council person, District 1. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I have a question, because um, I'm still trying to get clarity on this process, too. Um, I want to applaud the councilman's um, work in this in, in this endeavor. 
Um, but I, I want to begin by stating um, this isn't just a, a District 1 issue, a Bordeaux issue, a black issue. This is a citywide issue. And I believe serving in this chamber, I owe my constituents um, do justice to make sure that when I'm voting on these issues, I'm voting with the most informed information that I have to not just benefit my district, but to benefit this district altogether. My practice here in this chamber is not going to be passing along uh, legislation just so that it passed through the process. We need to get answers, and I like the great dialogue that we've had tonight. So, Councilman Leonardo, I will not be supporting this. I will um, keep my, my ears to the ground for further discussion as it goes through the process and goes back to committee. Um, but my question is, what does the, the mayor, public works, and Metro Council actually play in, in a site selection process? I, I heard someone allude to that um, we, we'll be, we will be uh, have the opportunity uh, for notice and public hearing and more control and effectiveness and procedural and all of that. I also heard someone mention uh, Bill Council Councilwoman Johnson as it relates to the process of the of the 60 days. Um, can we be provided with what would be the time frame under under the Jackson law? No, there's the three readings. Are we looking at 30 days? Are we looking at 45 days? From a procedural standpoint, are we looking at a shorter duration to have um, input into the process? Or are we looking at a longer duration to have input um, under the process with the current status quo? Under the... Uh Jackson Law, if that were to be adopted, the peculiar element that it adds is that it allows for a request for a public meeting. Um, at the public meeting, there also has to be a provision for written commentary. But that public meeting has to precede the final vote by no more than 30 days. So what you would typically or presumably do is have your second reading, then schedule the public, re public hearing less than 30 days before the third reading. Um, in terms of your first question about what role the mayor and public works and the council plays, um, under the Jackson law, again, there's a specific provision for allowance for a public hearing, a three reading process. Um, the, the mayor could weigh in, I guess, to the extent she wanted to before or after. Uh, the council would simply proceed in the course that they usually do with three reading ordinances but add the additional public hearing requirement that's required under the law, under the Jackson law. Councilman Swap. Call a question. Previous question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you'll open the, well, let me, let me clarify one thing about the, the motion. The motion as I heard it was a motion to adopt on second reading and re-refer to Public Works. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Madam Clerk, I anticipate we'll have negative votes, so if you would open the machine. Please cast your votes. It'll take just a second. Everyone's been all full Madam, here activating. Madam Clerk, if you would close the machine and tally the vote. I have 28 for, 8 against, 3 abstentions. Motion carries. BL 2017-559, Councilman Hastings, allows members of the Metro Council to initiate applications to amend the official zoning map of property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Councilman Hastings. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to move for de defer uh, this this um, this bill. Let's get our let's get uh, planning and zoning committee report. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, planning zoning historical recommended indefinite deferral. Thirteen in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman Hastings. Would like to move for an indefinite deferral. This motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-623, Rosenberg, Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing water line and accepts a new water line, sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrants, and any associated easements for properties located at Zero River Road and 5820 River Road. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee report, please. I think we're just missing public works. Uh, Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Do we have, but my, I'm, I'm showing we already have a report from Planning and Zoning, correct, Council Lady? Okay, let's get your, your second okay. report. Uh, planning, Zoning, Historical recommended approval. Thirteen in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-645, Pardue and Van Rees, amends the Metro Code to allow alcohol consumption by carriage passengers. Councilman Pardue. The vote of 4-0 to defer indefinitely what I was told. All right. Is the, the Council A. Van Rees. Um, yes, for just a matter of clarification, uh, we uh, agreed to defer this uh, bill as amended um, uh, because the mayor's office is going to do a comprehensive study of slow moving vehicles in the downtown area and we want to make sure that that comes in before this takes place. Thank you. All right. The motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-646. Rosenberg and Sledge adds a new section re re regulating mm -hmm. installation and operation of unmanned surveillance devices within the public right of way without prior Metro Council approval. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee out reports, please. Council Lady Murphy. The Personnel Committee deferred at the request of the sponsor for two meetings, 640 against. Councilman Pardew. Two week deferral was the sponsor's request. Councilman Elrod. Public Works, the, the, the request of the sponsor, two meeting deferral, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Still work to do. Two meetings, please. There's a motion to defer two meetings. Is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-657, uh, Councilman Sledge and Henderson. Amends the Metro Code to vest permanent possession and retention of any record transferred to the Metro Government Archives Division of the Net National Public Library to provide authority for the Metropolitan Archives to destroy such records when appropriate. Uh, Councilman, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Councilman Lee Henderson. Pardon me, Vice Mayor. That's Are we right. on 657? 657, yes, ma'am. Um, the plan Parks, uh, Library and Recreation Committee recommends approval. Eight in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman Lee Murphy. Personnel um, voted for approval, 640 against. Council Lady, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 658, Council Lady Van Rees, O'Connell, and others. Amends our Metro Code by regulating the sale or offering for sale of any food, goods, or personal property upon the streets and sidewalks within the, within the areas of Ryman Auditorium, Ascend Amphitheater, Tennessee Performing Arts Center, War Memorial Auditorium, and First Tennessee Park during certain hours or certain days. Council Lady Van Rees. Um, yes, uh, on the committee report as amended, I have to um, make sure that we move the amendment as amended. The committee report was five in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommended as amended, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lee Van Rees. Yeah, move the amendment, please. So motion to amend is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Your honor, your bill is amended. Uh, the amendment uh, is, is a matter of housekeeping in regard to the locations of uh, the areas around the Ascend Amphitheater. And with that, I ask for your approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-659, uh, Councilman Elrod amends the Metro Code pertaining to the definition of an arterial street. Councilman Elrod. Uh, if there's no other committee reports, uh, Public Works recommend for approval. Ten in favor, zero against. And with that, I move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-660, Councilman Anthony Davis, Cooper, and others authorizes the Metro Department of Water and Sewerage Services to participate with LVH2 LLC to provide public water service uh, improvements for both LVH2's proposed de development as well as other existing properties in the area. Count Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, budget and Finance uh, voted to approve 14-4-0 against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Thank you, sir. I will move for approval. Motion to approve. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-661 authorizes a participation in a maintenance agreement between the Metro Department of Water and Sewage Services and Davenport Downs Holding LLC to provide public pressure Sewer extension through construction of a sewage pump station and force main. Councilman Coleman. Committee report. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted 14 4 0 against to recommend approval. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval. 10 favors, 0 against. Councilman Coleman. Move for approval. The motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 662. Councilman Sledge, Allen, and Cooper. Approves an amendment to the ground lease for Rose Park between the Department of uh, Parks and Recreation and Belmont University. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to recommend 14 4 0 against. Councilor Lee Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Parks and Libraries Committee recommended approval. Eight in favor, zero against. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval. 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-663, O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen abandons existing uh, combined sewer mains and easements and accepts new combined sewer mains, manholes, and any associated easements for property located at 1419 Rosa L. Parks Boulevard. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Cooper. I'm sorry. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommend approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BO 2017-664, Pridemore, Elrod, and Allen. Changes the name of a portion of North DuPont Avenue to Van Vandiver, Vandiver? Vandiver Drive, and, and by renaming an unimproved uh, section of North DuPont Avenue to Vandiver Dr Court. Councilman Pridemore. Mr. Mr. Vice Mayor, committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zone historical recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman Potts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, traffic and parking voted to approve, 5 4 0 against. Councilman, uh, Councilman Pridemore. Uh, move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 665, O'Connell, Karen Johnson, and others. Renames Capitol Boulevard to Ann Dallas Dudley Boulevard. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman Potts. Traffic and parking vote to approve, 5, 4, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, this bill is uh, one that is a, an interesting renaming, and I would like to publicly thank David Ewing, uh, uh, Nashvilleian, who has provided a lot of the historical context for this, uh, and my colleagues for participating in this. I think this, uh, you know, sets us up to have a, a wonderful conversation about uh, the women's suffrage movement on the occasion of the centennial in 2020, and I, I look forward to this bill. Uh, moving through council and and then uh, having the public works implementation follow suit. So thank you to all my colleagues who have signed on to support this. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-666, uh, Withers, Elrod, and Allen 
amends BL 2016-533 by changing the name of a portion of Basketball Street to North 6th Street. I'm sorry. Amends BL 2016-533 by changing the name of a portion of Basketball Street from North 6th Street to South 6th Street. That makes no sense whatsoever. I'm just going to say that, but we're going to we're going <laughs> to pass it anyway. Uh, that, that, that does not make sense, guys. Um, I'm going to I'm going to assume that the bill itself makes sense because the caption, frankly, does not. But it's probably because it's Bill Six Six Six. I'm just saying that. So, uh, <laughs> Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get the committee reports, please? Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and historical asked the very same question and got a good explanation, which I'm sure the, the, the uh, council member will give. After that explanation, we approve 13 in favor, zero against. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not going crazy. <laughs> Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, uh, 10 in favor, zero against. Okay. Councilman Potts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic parking board to approve 5 4, zero against. Councilman Withers. Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. You got it. Uh, the comment is that this street has been renamed quite a few times, and in the most recent iteration, we went through a process and unfortunately got our directional signage wrong, so it needed to be South 6th, but okay. this, this will be the last time, we promise. Well, <laughs> technically, then, we should be renaming North 6th Street to South 6th Street and because that has been adopted and Basketball Street shouldn't be in there at all. That's just my sense. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on third reading. BL 2016-219, Bedney, Karen Johnson and others. Cancel 7.84 acres of the Paris View Park planned unit development uh, by changing from R10 to RS10, zoning for property located at Forest View Drive, unnumbered east of Murfreesboro Pike. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, Planning, Zoning, and Historical uh, recommended a deferral to December 29th, 2017. 13 in favor, zero against. Council Lady Johnson. I I'd like to move to defer to the second meeting in December. There's a motion to defer to the second meeting in December. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. BL 2016-473, Council Lady Mina Johnson, amends 4.37 acres of the Hillwood Court at West Nashville Specific Plan District for property located at 6813B and 6817 Charlotte Pike uh, to add parcel 15 and permit a maximum of 50 residential units where 34 residential units were previously approved. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, although uh, committee reports are in, I will have to introduce substitute. Uh, for that reason, I would like to re refer to uh, Planning Zoning Committee and uh, bring back for third reading at the next meeting. Motion to defer one meeting and re refer to Planning and Zoning. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-493, Council Lady Henderson, O'Connell, and others. Amends of Metro Code pertaining to sidewalks. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval of the third substitute, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works uh, recommended approval of the third substitute, 10 in favor, zero against. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to move the third substitute, please, and then if I may, request a moment of personal privilege at the conclusion of any discussion to thank those that worked on the bill, please. There's a motion to approve the third, third substitute. Uh, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I, what, I will let you speak last before we vote. Uh, Councilman? Councilman Elrod, no. I'm sorry. I, there you go. Sorry to hear my name called. Um, I just want to thank Councilwoman Henderson. She has worked on this tirelessly for many months with many folks, and I would have pulled uh, all of my hair out 
um, and doing what she has done. So I want to say thank you very much. There are going to be more, many more sidewalks built in Nashville because of this bill. And it's only through your hard work with many of the stakeholders that I'm sure we're not willing to want to even meet on it. So I appreciate all of your hard work um, on behalf of all of us. So thank, thank you, Councilwoman Henderson. Councilwoman Henderson. Thank wait, you. wait, wait, wait. Thank We're you, not Vice done Mayor. Yet. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much to the Metro planning staff uh, for all their time and hard work as this bill evolved, uh, to Michael Briggs, uh, to Adams Carroll, formerly of Metro Planning. A special thank you to Carrie Logan. Um, we are very well served colleagues in zoning policy work by Ms. Logan. Uh, thank you also to Metro staff and Public Works, Stormwater, Property Services, Codes, and BZA members for their input and feedback. Uh, thank you to Jennifer Carlett of the Metro Chamber for facilitating meetings with and input from the business stakeholders. She represented them well and we addressed many stakeholder concerns in this bill um, and incorporated uh, stakeholders suggestions so I appreciate the Chamber's support of this bill. Thank you to Nora Kern of Walk Bike Nashville and to Walk Bike staff and members for their input and advocacy for this bill. I'm grateful for all the emails that community members sent to the Planning Commission and to the Council in support. I appreciate also the engagement and support of the Nashville Civic Design Center, the Alliance for Green Hills, the Mayor's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advocacy Committee, the Mayor. I have uh, been a walkable communities advocate for 17 years, and over the years I've hosted many uh, community awareness walks and policy walks and met with developers and council members to encourage the construction of sidewalks. And that work did result in some incremental improvements in the Green Hills area, of which I am proud. But also over those same years, I realized that the only way to make a significant difference countywide, to make Nashville truly more safely walkable, and all of Nashville's neighborhoods better connected, was to improve the policy. A free person is a pedestrian, um, and the ability to walk uh, where you need to go is a fundamental civic right. And so uh, with that, uh, you know, I ran for office uh, on a Safe Streets platform to address this issue. Uh, so with that, I would renew my motion uh, for approval. This is a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Council Lady Henderson. Uh, BL 2017-548, uh, Councilman Sledge, changes 0.41 acres from MUL to MULA. Zoning for properties located at 1214, 1216, 1218, and 1220 Martin Street. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning Zone Historical recommend approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman Sledge. I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-579, Kendall and O'Connell. Changes 0.68 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 2805, 2807, 2809, and 2811 uh, Delaware Avenue to permit up to 16 residential units. Councilman Kendall. Committee reports, please. Councilor Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zone historical recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Kendall. I'd like to move to defer indefinitely. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-594, Councilman Sledge. Changes 0.7 acres from IWD to SB zoning for property located at 921, 923, and 925 Bath Street to permit, to permit a self-storage storage facility. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Councilman Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, uh, Planning Zone Historical recommended a withdrawal, 14 in favor, zero against. Councilman Sledge. At the request of the applicant, I request to withdraw. The motion to withdraw. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-603, Councilman Coleman. Changes 14.35 acres from AR2A, IWD, and OR20 to IR zoning for property located at 12575 Old Hickory Boulevard. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Councilor Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zone historical recommended approval as amended, 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman Coleman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion marries. Motion marries. Motion carries. <laughs> thank you, Vice Mayor. Motion. I'm not suggesting anything to anybody. Uh, motion carries. Well, we're now we're on your bill as amended, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a 
simple amendment to uh, improve some of the infrastructure along Old Hickory Boulevard. The developers agreed with the community to do a little bit more than what the traffic yeah. impact study requested. Uh, we're in the process of making sure that Old Hickory Boulevard is widened to four lanes, starting at Murfreesboro Road and Hot Pike going towards the interstate. So this has been on the board for about five or six months. We've gone back and forth with it and we've gotten every bit of uh, our wishes from the community, and we're at the point of going forward. So having said that, I renew my motion for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-606, Councilman Freeman. Changes 33.42 acres from R8, R10, and R15 to RS10 zoning for various properties located along Foothill Drive, Hollydale Drive, Deervale Drive, Shady Oak Drive, and Giant Oak Drive. Councilman uh, Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and historical recommended approval 15 in favor, zero Councilman against. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. This is a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-627, Councilman Glover. Amends 72.01 acres of a previously approved SP for properties located at 1209 and 1213 Tulip Grove Road, Tulip Grove Road unnumbered, and Valley Grove Road unnumbered to permit up to 340 residential units consisting of 164 resident single-family resident lots and 176 multifamily lots. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Van Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. I move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-628, Councilman O'Connell changes 0.53 acres from ORI to SP zoning for property located at 50 Music Square West to permit a hotel and restaurant. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the amendment, please. Uh, there's the, well, let's get committee oh, reports sorry. first. Council we need Lady to get Allen. committee reports. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval as amended, 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Now I'd like to move the amendment, please. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Councilman O'Connell. Now I would like to move the bill as amended, please. There's a motion to approve as amended. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-629, Councilman Hager, changes 0.82 acres from CL to CSA zoning for property located at 4640, 4642, and 4644 Old Hickory Boulevard. Councilman Hager. Mayor Committee reports. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-630, Council Lady Allen applies a historic bed and breakfast homes day overlay district to 0.2 acres for property located at 2808 Belmont Boulevard. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I think I'm the only committee report. Planning zone historical recommended approval 15 in favor, zero against, and I move approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-631, Councilman Scott Davis uh, amends 0.69 acres of the Douglas and Lishy specific plan district for property located at 1300 Lishy Avenue to permit up to 16 residential units and 3,800 square feet of retail and office space. Councilman Scott Davis. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval, please. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-632, Councilman O'Connell changes 1.04 acres from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 1,000, 1,002, 1,006, 1,008, 1,010, 1,012, 1,014, and 1,018 Scoville Street to permit 26 residential units. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move approval of the brief comment. The floor is yours. I uh, know this came up for public hearing when I was absent. I know we did have uh, someone speak in opposition to this. I know the development team here uh, was able to speak to the woman who spoke in opposition, and I am intending to follow up with her, but I think we have uh, appropriate community support for this, uh, and I would like to renew my motion to approve. Thanks. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BO 2017-633, Councilman Kendall. Changes point 22 acres from RS5 to RM20A zoning for property located at 2800 Delaware Avenue. Councilman Kendall. Committee report. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval. 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman Kendall. Move approval. So motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-634, Councilman Swope, changes 26.6 acres from R40 to SP zoning for property located at 621A Hill Road to permit up to 31 residential units. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd like to move the amendment on this. Let's get com our committee, committee report, report first. please. Council Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval as amended, 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman Swope. At this time, I'd like to move the amendment. There is a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. And I would ask to move this forward as amended. There's a motion to approve as amended. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-635, Councilman Swope. Cancels 26.6 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for property located at 621A Hill Road. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Committee report, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. There's, there's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-636, also Council Swope, applies a historical landmark overlay to its 10.66 acres, a property located at 621A Hill Road. Councilman Swope. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-637. Councilman O'Connell. Changes point 21 acres from IR to MUN zoning for property located at 1323 3rd Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Council Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zoning historical recommended approval 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-638, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Changes 4.91 acres of the shopping center neighborhood uh, from... <clears throat> Changes 4.91 acres of the shopping center neighborhood to specific plan residential zoning for a property located at Old Acre Boulevard, unnumbered to permit a multifamily residential development with a maximum of 50 units or an assisted care living facility with a maximum of 150 rooming units. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, if you would, I can take the next one uh, together as well. Uh, well, okay, we can also take BL 2017-639, Council Lady Mina Johnson, cancels 4.91 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for property located at Old Acre Boulevard, unnumbered, southeast of Ridge Lake Parkway. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval of both bills, 15 in favor, zero against. I would like to move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve, properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-640, Councilman Sledge ma makes provisions to a point two two eight to put to point two two acres of a historic bed and breakfast overlay district for a property located at nine oh six Bradford Avenue. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zoning historical recommended approval, fifteen in favor, zero against. Council Councilman Sledge. I'd move approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. BL 2017-641, Councilman Swope, cancels 2.81 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for property located at 673, 675, 681, and 683 Old Hooker Boulevard. Uh, Councilman Swope. 
my error. Can we take uh, 642 at the same time? Um, I think you have an amendment on the second one, so let's take them okay. separately this time. Understood. Committee reports, please. Councilor Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. After some good discussion, planning, zoning, and historical recommended approval, 15 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilor Lee. And I would ask for your approval. Move forward. This is a disapproved bill, so we're correct. This will require, require a roll call vote. 27 votes are necessary for it to be adopted. Madam Clerk, if you'd open the machine. Madam Clerk, if you, uh, we, whenever you're ready, close the machine and tell you that. I have 37 for, zero against. Motion carries. Bill 2017-642, Councilman spoke. Changes 0.21 acres from MUN to o and OL to SP zoning for property located at 673, 675, 681, and 683 Old Hickory Boulevard to permit a self-storage facility with a maximum of four stories. Councilman spoke. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Again, after some good, robust discussion and compliments to the uh, committee, to the council member for um, great engagement with the uh, neighborhood, the uh, planning zoning historical recommended approval as amended, 15 in favor, zero against. Councilman Swap. At this time, I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? You're on your bill as amended. And I would ask for your approval as amended with a brief comment. The floor is yours. Um, let me say thank you to Carrie and the planning, full planning staff for being supportive, even though disapproved of this entire process. Uh, Brandon Burnett, I owe you my life for all this. Uh, yeah, seriously. Well, he does live in my district, so. Uh, I got to thank the developer on this one, um, Platinum Storage, for being so gracious to the three surrounding HOAs on this. This was one of these situations where it was already zoned basically commercial um, and much more intrusive to the neighborhood than what we're trying to change it into. Uh, and as a consequence, we've had a lot of meetings with the three HOAs, with the developer, and everybody has come to terms. We're going to get a little pocket park out of this. Uh, there'll be restrictive covenants put on the pocket park. So the HOAs, HOAs are ecstatic about it, uh, and it is, well, it reduces traffic as much as anything else but a graveyard. And on Old Hickory Boulevard, that is my number one concern. So with that, I renew my motion to approve. Council Lady Meany Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I made a comment and a compliment at the yesterday's uh, committee. But uh, typically, because we did make news about how many uh, bill we disapproved, approved the disapproval, uh, disapproved the bill. But this is a uh, one exception uh, because uh, existing part would allow more inappropriate development. And typically, I would suggest a community plan amendment. However, this will be residential. So if you are to amend the community plan, it will be residential. So under those circumstances, this is the best uh, outcome. And I would like to congratulate and commend your hard work, uh, Council Member Swap. And although I do respect uh, Planning Commission's decision and hard work, this is the one exception we, as a council, uh, we can override this uh, commissioner's uh, request. And I'd be happy to support this approved bill. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would open the machine. Again, this is a disapproved bill. It requires 27 votes to be adopted. Close the machine and tell you vote when you're ready, Madam Clerk. 37 4, 0 against. Motion carries. BL 2017 643, Councilman Cooper amends the Metro Code relative to an economic and community development incentive grants. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly, I'm sorry, Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, and I know I'm beginning to sound like a, uh, a broken record on this. And it's not necessarily about um, Councilman, uh, the Councilman's bill. 
Um, and I think, um, I think Ms. Lomax is gone for the day. Um, but I'm just, uh, if I can send a message to the mayor's office, I know Mr. Cooper is listening. Um, when these bills have come up, economic development bills, we've asked uh, the Office of Economic Development to send us copies of certain reports whether um, economic development actually works uh, in some of the things that we're doing. Uh, Councilman Cooper's bill is one of those things. What we're trying to do is get some information about pro and con, whether these things work. Um, this, unfortunately, is the third time that we've asked for this, and we haven't gotten it yet. Um, and we've also asked, on the last time this bill was up, on um, kind of a, a wage uh, break-even point in terms of what it costs or what we're looking for in terms of wages when we're looking for new incentives, new jobs. What is the wage that we're looking for in terms of actually providing incentives for? Uh, because obviously when you have new people come to town, it actually does cost the city something. What is the break-even point that we're using? We haven't gotten that information yet either. And the third thing I asked for last time was um, how much is a $500 incentive for new employees? Uh, how long does it continue to last? Is it one year? If it continues on and on and on, a new employee initiative of $500 is going to cost more than that. Um, and again, I'm, I hate to keep bringing it up, but we have not gotten any of that information, so we can't pass it out to any of the other council members. Nothing about the councilman's bill. It's fine. Going to vote for it. But economic incentives, um, if we're going to continue to look at these things, we need that information, and we're just not getting it. So encourage uh, the mayor's office. I'll follow up with a letter. Really would like to receive that. All right? Thank you. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-648, BL O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen authorized is authorizes 21C, Nashville Master Tenant LLC, to install, construct, and maintain underground and aerial encroachments in the right-of-way located at 221 2nd Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Rice. May I like to move approval, please? There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-649, Councilman Sledge, uh, Elrod and Allen, uh, abandons an existing sewer main and any associated easements for pro four properties located along Villa Place, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Mo motion carries. Bill 2017-650, uh, Council Lady Hueso, Al Elrod and Allen, abandons an existing water main and accepts a new water main and fire hydrant for property located at 3354 Bell Road. Council Lady Hueso. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Second. There's a motion to approve. Is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, BL 2017-651, Elrod and Allen, approves a participation agreement between Metro Government and Centurion Products Incorporated regarding Centurion's, Centurion Stone development and the right-of-way needed for the construction of Tufting Court. Councilman Elrod. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, BL 2017-652, Elrod and Allen abandons a portion of Tufton Court right-of-way and easement. Councilman El Elrod. Move approval. <laughs> There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Shulman, can you give the council a reminder about the judicial uh, interview process? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. I think all the applications are in for the vacant General Sessions Court judge. I think we have eight applications. Uh, the Rules Committee is going to hear from all those eight on um, Monday, May the 1st at 5.30 p.m. here in the chamber. Is that right? I'm looking at the clerk. Are we close? Approximately 5.30 p.m. So the Rules Committee will actually be meeting that Monday night here in the chamber. Everyone is invited. This is the chance to come and actually hear from all eight applicants. Um, and I know the vote will be taken on um, that Tuesday, the second Tuesday meeting. May 16th. Yeah, our second, second meeting. No, it's the third Tuesday, but the second meeting in May, uh, May the 16th. But if you want to hear from the candidates, this is very, very important. Uh, this is your chance to hear from them. That meeting again will be approximately 5.30 p.m. in the chamber on Monday, May the 1st. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You are adjourned. adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.